Hello and welcome to Enterprise Tech Spotlight with your host, Keith Hales, COO at Infosystems. Thanks for joining us today. Hello and welcome to Enterprise Tech Spotlight with Infosystems. My name is Keith Hales and uh, thank you so much for joining us today for this podcast where we believe that IT executives should get educated and get involved and learn more about uh, their business and their technology so that they can make better informed decisions. And today we're going to be talking about backups and um, Cobalt Iron is going to be uh, joining us today. From Cobalt Iron, we have Doug. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you joining us on the podcast. Keith, thanks for uh, having me and uh, I'm happy to be talking backup because I think it's a very, very relevant subject, especially with the times we're in. So happy to be with you and happy to be talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is this is interesting. Backups is something that's been around really, you know, it's, when you're talking about technology, backups seem to have always been a part of the conversation. But yet, I think we're going to be talking about maybe some new topics or some new uh, aspects of backup. But Doug, before we jump into all that, why don't you give your uh, everybody a little bit of background on you and how you got to the role that you're in at Cobalt Iron. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you. So, uh, so it, it just, my history is uh, kind of long and storied. I've been uh, been in data protection for 22 years now. Uh, started uh, with Avar, where I was doing uh, you know large scale implementations of of all things Arc Serve, um, and then I went uh, and joined uh, a software company, uh, Commvault. So I was there for 18 years, where um, did a lot of things there. Ran their support organization, ran their pre sales uh, organization in the east. And even did some product uh, marketing uh, towards the tail end of my uh, my uh, employment there, but uh, I, I regularly were t- was talking to customers around a fundamental change that they wanted to see in data protection, and th- it really led me to you know looking at solutions that were more aligned to. Uh, what I would call modern consumption models. Um, and and when I started doing my research, Cobalt Iron was the one that kept on coming up as the, a true uh, as-a-service delivery of data protection, um, but more, again, in that consumable model that I think more customers are, are really leaning towards. Um, so it, it, about a year ago, joined Cobalt Iron, and uh, I've been uh, been enjoying it ever since. Yeah, well, that sounds, sounds like a good story, and it sounds like you have a lot of uh, relevant experience to this conversation. But you, you kept talking about something that I want to be sure everybody understands, which is the consumption model of backups. So let me yeah. let me take a step back here. So backups traditionally have been where organizations will buy a license or, or they'll buy a product or they'll buy a storage device and that will become their backup solution. And they might take a copy of their backups and maybe that license allows them to move it to the cloud. Um, or something like that, but but how is a consumption model different than the way that backups have been traditionally sold really for, for decades now? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think uh, cloud and cloud economics have really played a big part into transforming the way people consume a lot of things. Uh, when you look at a lot of software models today, they're all around subscription. So, you know, how much am I consuming, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, kind of what's the interval that I'm going to pay? Because you're right, historically speaking, backup was, hey, I'm, you know, I have this many clients, I have these many servers, I have this many master servers, media servers, so forth and so on. Let me buy licenses individually for each of those and, and that's how I back them up. And if I exceed that, well, I'm going to be audited. Or if I exceed that, I can't protect my environment. Um, but with Cobalt Iron, you know, it's again, it's more of that cloud-like, uh, subscription or cloud-like consumption, whereby you pay for what you're using. Uh, and because we are an as-a-service delivery of data protection, it makes perfect sense to be in a, in a more elastic model like that than more of those inflexible models that we see with, uh, with other solutions out there. So, so you talked a lot about cloud and the consumption model, which I think makes sense for everybody. So the obvious question I'm sure you get often is, okay, so you guys are only in the cloud, right? So, so this is a cloud solution. I got to take all my data and put it up in the cloud. So is that correct with Cobalt Iron? Not exactly. So although we're a consumption model, we realize that enterprise organizations, it's probably not realistic that all of their data is ever going to make it up to the cloud. Uh, or if they do, it's going to be a very gradual process in that they, uh, you know, perhaps they work, uh, they move some workloads to the cloud. Um, but some workloads may never. But the cool thing about Cobalt Iron is that we can operate in a cloud-like model, even if it's on-premises. So we fully support 
private, public, or hybrid clouds to be able to support, again, uh, some of the more stringent SLAs, RPOs, and RTOs that uh, many or enterprise organizations still require. Okay. So, yeah, so you mentioned, uh, I always like to be sure we call it acronyms. So, SLAs being service level agreements that uh, may be placed on an, an organization to say, hey, I need my backups available within a certain amount of time. I need backups so often. I need to be able to restore them within a certain amount of time. Um, and then RTOs being, again, that recovery time objective and RPOs being recovery points objectives, recovery point objective, which es- essentially means that if I, if I have a failure, RTO is how long until I'll back up and that RPO is uh, how much data did I lose, right? And when you're talking backups, obviously those are all key things to consider and to be sure we understand. So, so that's good. So you, you handle that. So you just mentioned the word enterprises. Um, large organizations, and we see this, I know you see this, uh, they often have many different types of systems that they're backing up. They may have Windows environments. They may have uh, Linux environments. They may have a legacy like an IBM I or an AIX or maybe even a mainframe. They also have um, all types of different, they may have different hypervisors. They may have, they may have different data centers. So how do you guys handle you know, there are some great solutions out there that, that if you just want to back up a specific a specific type of platform or a specific operating system that work really well, how do you guys handle these multi-platform environments? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And it's not unheard of for us to be talking to prospects and customers that are running four, five, and six different solutions. Uh, to your point, one for a particular workload. Uh, you know, you might have a platform that's, uh, you know, protecting their physical machines or their AX or Unix. Uh, you might have another solution that's uh, used just for virtualization. You might have another solution that's for databases. And that's really an, a, uh, an unsustainable model when you think about it. For one, it's overly complex to manage. Uh, you know, if, if you're running three, four, five different solutions out there, you're talking, you know, uh, three, four, five times the infrastructure, storage, compute licensing, maintenance streams, uh, you know, people, man hours that are associated with each of those. And so that just becomes a very, very difficult model uh, outside of the the financial model, just operationally. Um, But even more importantly these days is the risk that that poses to organizations when the same standards aren't applied across the board of all those solutions. So we really believe at Cobalt Iron that that's just not a sustainable model, that operationally it doesn't make sense and financially it doesn't make sense. So our solution is designed to really be able to help organizations get get their arms around all of those platforms, all of those solutions, all of those applications, uh, you know, operating systems, platforms, and be able to provide it in a consistent manner with a single solution. So regardless of, you know, any of the platforms you mentioned, even some of the, the uh, you know, maybe the, the ones that historically speaking have been treated out of band like IBM I, we can bring that into the fold and protect it under a, a single solution. Okay, that's that's fantastic. So uh, the next question is, is really, uh, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit because I already know the answer. But that's okay. Uh, here at InfoSystems, we we're we're really big on security, on the you know, security of an organization's environment, and all the data uh, security and the cybersecurity that goes along with that. We actually have a whole separate podcast series dedicated to it. Um, but I do want to touch on one important aspect. So, what we're seeing in the ransomware world is that ransomware, just in the last twelve to eighteen months, uh, the the amount that people are charging for ransoms has has effectively tripled. Uh, for for what they were charging even 12 or 18 months ago. And the second thing that we're seeing is that the guys continue to get smarter and the bad guys continue to get smarter and smarter and smarter. And they are searching for backups on the, on the network. They're looking for a company's backups because they know if they can encrypt and they can get the main production environment and they can get the backups, they've got them. The company has, has effectively no choice but to pay the ransom. And I hate paying bad guys. So how does Cobalt Iron address this issue? Yeah, it's it, that's really the core to our solution is, is we know that at, you know, because we're an as-a-service delivery of backup, we need to be more secure than the next guy out there. And so when you look at a, a traditional solution or a legacy solution, you've got a lot of entry points for these nefarious characters. You've got databases, you've got, you know, storage, you've got operating systems, you've got, uh, you know, again, multiple layers that if you're not hardening your environment on a consistent basis, because these guys are getting more sophisticated every day, then you're, you're really putting yourself at extreme risk. Now times that by 
four or five solutions that you may be using to back up your environment, and it really becomes a recipe for disaster. And so we take a completely different approach. Again, we're a single solution that manages a complete environment, but we're, we essentially create a perimeter defense around the, the data protection landscape in that we manage the infrastructure, we manage the security, the operating system, the storage, all of those things. So all of those penetration points that uh, typically would be wide open, you know, wide openly exposed to uh, those nefarious characters, we're locking them down. So, you know, companies don't have to worry about, again, whether their uh, SQL database is locked down that, you know, they're using for a catalog or an index server. They don't have to worry worry about whether their NFS or SIFS, uh, you know, mounts are, are being, uh, you know, locked down or secured uh, from a data protection standpoint. All of those things are delivered as a service. And so we truly enable our customers to manage the outcome of backup which is just the occasional restore that they might need to do, uh, or you know whether their their backups are successful or not. All of those other um, you know elements of, of a solution are managed as a service by Cobalt Iron. So it really enables them to have a security posture that they simply can't have with uh, multiple solutions and managing it on their own. And one thing you mentioned pretty recently to me, Doug, is that y'all also have the ability to have uh, I think immutable type backups or worm. Uh, yeah. Write uh, once, read many type of environment. That basically, once the backup is 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 taken, um, that 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 specific set of data can't be changed. So a, a bad actor could not come in and encrypt the whole environment because you can't change that that copy. Is that is that a true statement I just said? That's true. We're worm by default. So again, once uh, once it's written, nobody's going to come in and and uh, be able to delete it. And certainly, nobody has access to the underlying storage to be able to you know uh, bypass the system and delete it as well. So it's really protected on multiple levels. Whereas, you know, again, looking at some other solutions on the market today, um, there's you, you do a quick search and and you see that they've been exposed and uh, and customers have actually not been able to recover their data as a result of. Uh, you know, storage that's been locked down. So we, we simply don't have those problems. So, all right, I, I'm going to do kind of a recap here. So we talked about as a service, meaning consumption model, right? So so people buy what they need when they need it. Um, they don't have to buy a whole bunch of stuff ahead of time. You don't force them into some type of, type of you know, giant deal and then make them buy, twist their arm really hard uh, once a year to get, get the maintenance and all that stuff. Uh, the second thing is it, it's anywhere, can be local, can be in the cloud, can be hybrid. It really doesn't matter as much from your perspective where the data lives. So if they've made an investment in local storage or if they have a cloud posture or, or something both, right, they can, they yeah. can go either route. Um, we talked about how it is secure, that both the wrapper that's put around it, but then also just the base underlying technology that once the backup is taken, it can't be changed, which is which is key. Um, so and we've talked about the multiple platforms that you can support regardless of what they're running effectively. So who's a really good fit? So somebody's listening to this and they're like, all right, this all kind of makes sense. I don't know what we're using for backup today, or I mean, I know what we're using for backup today and yeah, we have some of those problems. So who, who would it make sense to kind of get to that next level to dig into cobalt iron to, uh, you know, to talk to somebody in info systems or somebody, you know, give you a call, Doug and say, Hey, I want to learn a little more about this. So who who do we who do you actually deliver the highest value to when you're talking to these customers? Can you describe some of those key targets and some of those key customers? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, enterprise organizations that are struggling with data protection uh, would obviously be, you know, a, a key target of ours. Uh, one where they might be using, you know, two, three, four different solutions to manage their complete landscape. Those are absolutely, you know, somebody that we uh, we want to talk to. Somebody that is aging infrastructure, perhaps deduplication appliances, VTLs, uh, you know, again, infrastructure that's simply, that was a great Band-Aid for, you know, back in the day, but simply isn't going to be able to scale to today's data changes and, and security models or security, uh, you know, risks. Those are people we want to talk to as well. Um, you know, really anybody with security concerns around data protection as well are people we need to be talking to because we we truly enable uh, a level of security within the data protection landscape that's uh, that's really unique in the market. Um, you know, it, it's really anybody who has challenges with um, you know data protection, but but our solution is certainly aligned to enterprise needs um, because you know again we we cover so. 
uh, so broadly and so deeply all of the applications, all of the databases, all of the platforms that, that are in an enterprise. So I would say we're, we're certainly more aligned to uh, you know enterprise organizations that are looking to take what they're doing today and transform it into a modern uh, data protection solution. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Doug, thank you for joining us for this podcast. It's been, it's been good having you on and uh, appreciate you, uh, you know, the fact that you even changed your background for me uh, so that, so that for those of you that can look at the screen right now, if you haven't, if you, if you actually are watching the video and didn't just download the audio, there's a nice glow above each of our heads in the image. And so it looks like we're just both really smart, um, which, Hey, I need all the help I can get. So I'm, I'll take it. Right. Absolutely. Uh, well, <laughs> well, well, thank you. And um, thanks for joining us for this uh, Enterprise Tech Spotlight. Uh, we hope that you do continue to get educated, continue to get involved in your company's decisions. And if, if uh, anything that we said sounds interesting today on regarding backups or Cobalt Iron, please feel free to reach out to us and uh, look forward to talking with you. And hopefully, hopefully talking to uh, Doug, look forward to talking to you again and also looking forward to um, putting together the next podcast. So thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.